Welcome back. My name is Dimitri Sebastian. And I'm Wes Kendall. And we are back in session. We no longer know what to do with our hands. Yes. Fancy so, new mic. Well, how do you feel about this? How do you, so how do you feel about the uh, new setup? It's like liberating and like constricting at the same time. It's like I, I don't have a mic to hold, so now it's like I have emptiness in my hands. Yeah, we took that away from you. I feel like there's been so much time where you've been trying to find ways to get comfortable, and I feel like that the, uh, the phallic symbol of holding the uh the microphone you're like this is comfort this is my home or lightsaber (laughs) or lightsaber that's true it's uh but yeah we we got these new mics for everyone listening um over on the podcast or if you're on the youtube if the audio is kind of messed up early on forgive us we're kind of doing this live i uh tried to set it up yesterday but Mm -hmm. uh god only knows that it it just depends on the day we're we're upgrading here and there like as we go so it's like you know it's going to come with some growing pains. Yeah, absolutely. So, to get what we're actually talking to today. Yes. Cardio's back. Cardio's back. It's it's warm out, especially in Arizona. Like, it was 97 degrees yesterday. So, you know, not, that was kind of real. I heard that last year was hot girl summer. Yeah. But I've heard that now it's uh, it's going to be white boy summer. Is that what I heard? I heard white it. Summer. Yes, white, white boy summer. summer. That was like Tom Hanks. Uh, Son. That was Tom Hanks. Uh, you're not on the mic, just so you know. The, uh, you're... It was Tom Hanks' son, who's hilarious in his own way. He talks like a Rastafarian accent whenever he wants to, which is one of my favorite things about Colin him. Colin Hanks? Is that who we're talking about? Or is, is it, it he got another Hanks? son? It's his old one. has got, like, a bunch of tattoos. Talks mm-hmm. like he's he's just, like, he's super weird. I don't even want to say half the stuff he says because I'm pretty sure it's, like, heavy cultural appropriation <laughs> stuff. Yeah. And I'm not the kind of person who usually gets on that train, but with him, I think it is. <laughs> but he uh, he came out and he was like, yeah, we're doing white boy summer now. This is the day. And everyone's just like, this is weird. And now he's, like, been fleshing out the rules of white boy summer to make sure yeah. everyone knows he's like this is a nascar racist white boy summer <laughs> this is like jack harlow and john b and like, first of all i support john b i would die for john b for those of you who don't watch the outer banks and uh he's oh i know who you're talking about <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah it's basically like you're not allowed to wear boat shoes you're not allowed to wear the reef sandals with the bottle openers <laughs> <laughs> he's got merch you, you ruined everything. my spring break <laughs> exactly if i can't wear the reefs with the bottle opener it's not happening but in accordance with white boy summer or hot girl mm-hmm. summer, whatever you decide to take yeah. part in, because we live in America, is uh, y- you got to be you got to be nice and trimmed up the best way you can. I see. And uh, how many weeks is it? How many weeks till actually summer is it well, at this point? Uh, about four weeks in Arizona. Okay, four weeks. May May first. That's when you cross that line. If right? you were already on a deficit, yeah. you're behind. That's true. <laughs> yeah, it's like we've been saying it since like February. You know, pool season starts early here, so it really like, does. Pool season is uh, there's like three months where we take off, one month in the middle of the summer where no one wants to do it, mm-hmm. and then yeah, apparently summer doesn't actually start until June twentieth. Well, that's you know my. Calendar. Yeah, in what Minnesota? Yeah, and then ends on September twenty second. My thermometer says like, otherwise. In, in Wisconsin, <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Northern Hemisphere. I say as soon I don't as it crosses hundred degrees, we're we're there. Exactly, we're there. Yeah. It's like exactly summer started, the pools opened up. Yeah, so it was uh, the the reason this came up besides the fact that everyone's looking in the mirror, thinking to themselves, just like, why is summer here so fast? Uh, the uh, five star is doing a cardio challenge right mm-hmm. now. Can you yep. explain that to me a little bit? Yeah, we're doing a 14 day uh, consecutive cardio challenge, which we're, we're being pretty easy on what we're qualifying as cardio. Like uh, <laughs> a brisk walk outside is considered cardio in this regard. So it's like basically we need 30 minutes of some type of cardio, either you know on a machine, steady state, or like walk, run, hike, something like that. Okay. But it's like 30 minutes and it's 14 days straight. And the only hard part is our gym is closed on Sunday. So it's like you got to You actually have to go outside for one of those? Yeah, it's like you're forced. <laughs> you're forced down the elements. No, I mean, the, I actually am glad you guys made it like somewhat easy because yeah. I feel, especially with like the, the military type guys, there's like it's always got to be like so specific. It's like yeah. unless you're running outside or running up a mountain or doing sprints, yeah. it doesn't count. 60 pound pack or else, you know, doesn't count. No. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Congratulations. I'm glad you're preparing for the baton that's coming up. Right. But uh, <laughs> not yeah. me. <laughs> not me. I got hit up the other day. Someone sh- like literally like two weeks ago. The baton's yeah. coming up in like a month and a half. Yeah. Like, hey, do you want to do the baton with me? I was like, are you out of your mind? <laughs> yeah. For those of you who don't know, the baton is a. Uh, it's in reference it, to thirty something miles or something. Between thirty, it's. Oh, 
something like that. Yeah. It was like back in World War II in uh, the Pacific, the Japanese had a bunch of POWs. They made a bunch of guys march. A bunch of people died. It was very terrible. And in remembrance, we do the Bataan Death March, which is a, you can either do it with no weight, 45 pounds or 35 pounds. Yeah, something. There's and, like three levels to it. And yeah. it's terrible. And you walk like, it's it's at least 30 miles. Everyone says like the bottom of their feet just melt off from the, the yeah. walking, basically. It's, it's like your really bad. bottom of your foot is a blister by the end of it. So someone was like, hey, uh, you've done no prep for this. Do you want to do this in 30 days? I'm like no, but uh, th- then those Did are the first people sergeant. We- was it first sergeant? It was not actually. It was not someone I went to college. A <laughs> <laughs> first sergeant would have been the person who did it though. <laughs> um, yeah. He thought about it. He's yeah, thought- he-, he was like, "Who should I ask?" And I know that both of us were on his list. Yeah, I'm sure. But the uh, with the cardio challenge stuff, I just I feel like something is so much better than nothing right because when people talk about the uh concept of like okay i'm starting my journey to lose weight like i've never done anything they always say just go on a walk yeah. every single day yeah stop that. drinking soda go on a walk you will be shocked yeah that will make change right there and it's uh in from a cardiovascular standpoint it's just so much better for you uh like slice and i we started running again i've been dragging him with me yeah and uh it was funny the first few runs he's just like throwing up having a bad time mm-hmm. and then now it's like he's starting to kick my ass because he's like got this freaking cute little runner's body and then uh <laughs> and uh he like he's it's funny too because he's just like now cruising and everything it's yeah. just it's it was funny how quickly your body can start to just be like it doesn't feel better no but you immediately like are sleeping better you're feeling better in the morning and uh i, I know the whole thing is like you can't outrun run a bad diet but mm-hmm. if you're gonna change nothing else about your life go outside or yeah. on a treadmill. Well, it's all about the consistency of it. That's what the I think the whole point of the thirty day, or the fourteen day challenge we're doing is like, hey, you can do it multiple days in a row and not die. You'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's what. <laughs> well, also I think the uh, the general statement is between I think it's between sixty and like eighty days is how you create a habit. Right. So if you can get someone like just doing cardio for like a few weeks Mm -hmm. then they might just keep doing it right and then they're a better person for it but it's uh when we talk about the types of cardio you could be doing there so you name the treadmill we have Mm -hmm. the uh the stairs you can go on a run outside you can do sprints you can Mm -hmm. do stairs outside if you have that available um does it matter which one you do well i mean yes and no there's, there's parts that matter and there's parts that don't. I mean, honestly, I think the consistency is the most important part in the intensity, obviously, like depending on what you're trying to achieve. But what I would say is like you don't want to just do one form of cardio forever if you're just trying to like focus on fat loss. Mm-hmm. If you're like, you know, do 5Ks or marathons, you're going to probably do 90% of your cardio running, you know, just yeah. because like you're training for something specific. But if you're like trying to lose weight, cut up for summer or whatever, just be healthy, then what I would recommend is one, finding a type of cardio that you don't hate. You don't want to kill yourself doing. I can't find one. <laughs> <laughs> or you can at least tolerate on a semi, you know, regular basis. Okay, that's a little bit more reasonable. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for bringing the bar down for me. <laughs> and then from there, uh, you have to find one that's going to like, you know, be able to have progression or, you know, your body won't adapt to it so quickly. So you can't just go on a casual walk outside forever is what i'm saying it's like yeah we'll get the ball rolling you can probably get a few months out of that but at some point you'll have to change it up a little bit what i have uh noticed is a good defining line for a lot of people is some people want to just get it out of the way right and a good way to do that is with a treadmill or a stair mill put on a podcast or youtube video put on some music hang out and do that then there is the side that doesn't want to be bored slash wants to focus on performance. Right. That or the people I'd say you should go outside and do that. Yeah. The uh, step on that. Cat is having way too much fun. Cat found a zip tie. Yeah. <laughs> we will wrangle her eventually. I am not doing we'll well get her on job. Cat <laughs> one of these days. <laughs> the, uh, but you have your outdoors performance people. And I would say like, that's when you should be running outside on roads, on dirt, right. on hills, on stairs. Mm-hmm. And also that is way less boring. It's right. uh, the, but that's where I kind of draw the line. Do you want to lose fat and do it quickly and focus on it? Just do it at the gym. Watch your YouTube mm-hmm. video. Do you want to get better at running and find it to be a more interesting experience? Typically outside. Yeah. Well, it's just like working out. Is it, are you working out or are you training? You know, that's it. Are you Go training? outside, find some rocks. Yeah. Just <laughs> well, Go full Dragon Ball Z with it. Right. 
<laughs> so from there, I think we could break it down to like, you know, we have steady state cardio, mm -hmm. you have hit cardio, and then you have like interval training. Yep. And then, you know, from there, you can even do like sprints. It's just like you, there's subcategories to those categories, basically. Now, where does the elliptical fall in this? I would say, well, you could do any cardio machine. You could do intervals or you could do steady state on. You know, it's like you can mm -hmm. go high, low intervals, like high intensity for a minute, low intensity for a minute, you know, for like 20 minutes. Now, what about that. that one that's just like a hand crank for people in wheelchairs? That's uh, also the same thing. You it's could so steady. hard. <laughs> that one, respect to those guys, because if you if you think, you know, the stair mill burns, wrong. That one fucking that burns. That is so it is. <laughs> So you want to get rid of your bingo wings, yeah. go on one of those things, and it's god off. That kicks your butt. <laughs> so, like you said, you're breaking them in a couple types. Yeah. So let's go and start with the steady state. Mm -hmm. What is what does that look like? Where should you be going? What should you be doing? So that's something where you want to like do at. I would say your goal should be you know somewhere between twenty and fifty minutes, something like that. You know where you're doing a. Uh, somewhat consistent pace you want your heart rate elevated between like 125 to like 165 something like that where you're not like doing a full out sprint with intensity but you're doing like uh, something that's going to continue to burn calories mm -hmm. it can't be so low in intensity that you're not really you know having a significant impact on your deficit like mm -hmm. if your heart rate's at 105 you're you're not doing it right well what we've talked about before is when you first start running, all types of cardio suck. It's right. just like, I can't tell you what's going to be better because it all sucks. But once you get that, you've laid your framework, you now are like a person who runs. Right. But so once you were a person who runs, what we what we called it in the military was an all day pace. Right. Where you're like, you're definitely your heart rates up, you're breathing. But and this is why it's nice to have a running partner. You can talk. Yeah. You can discuss and you can keep it up tempo and you can keep things going. But you're running at a state where it's like you're a little bit labored to speak. Right. But you can still do that. And that's a yeah. really good solid, like fat burning it comfort is. zone. And you can usually be able to do that between like two and three miles. And like you said, that's about, you know, 20, 30 minutes, three minutes, thir or 30 minutes, three miles, pretty reasonable, all things considered. Right. And then you you basically like, phew, you were in the, uh, the steady state cardio zone. Yeah. That's like what you want is that not, I'm, I struggle to say comfortable, but that doable. Pace, yeah, you know? yeah. Doable is better. Cause yeah. <laughs> when I say you can talk it more like, there's a difference between if someone said, hey, did you see that weird cactus? You could be like, oh, yeah, that was, that was weird. Yeah. Versus like you couldn't even respond if you wanted to. Like that yeah. is not a the an all day pace. Right. Yeah, exactly. That's that's a good place to be for like if you're trying to do fat loss, I would mm -hmm. say, because, you know, you aren't cutting into your recovery and impacting like your muscles so much that you wouldn't be able to still work out, but you're, you know, getting that deficit, you're burning those calories and you're actually accessing fat for energy. So now the buzzword for many years was hit. Yes. Hit was very, very fetch for a while there. Yes. Is hit still as fetch as it always was or? Uh, I think it depends. Like for certain athletes, it's awesome because you know, like if you, I'd say a lot of, um, uh, a lot of non like lifting people, you know, if you're not trying to like be really strong or, you know, put on as much size as possible, hit is great because mm -hmm. you're not worried about like really in, uh, impacting your muscle gains. Instead, you're just trying to blast, you know, cardio uh, at like a more efficient yeah. pace. You know, it's like you don't have to do hit for 50 minutes. Good luck. No one's doing hit for 50 minutes. But I mean, I have done it. And I have seen it done. It's just a really bad. Is it time. actual hit though? You know, it's you like, get breaks. <laughs> you get okay. You're right. No, you don't do wind sprints for 50 minutes straight. Yeah, you can spread them out, but it's more of a CrossFitty thing. That's when yeah. you start getting into that danger zone of like, is this CrossFit person trying to make me stronger? Yeah. or Are they trying to kill me? Yeah, like Orange Theory is a good example. Yeah, forty. That's what I was thinking. Know, yeah. yeah, you do like 40 minutes of like constant. Yeah. But that, that's it's, a good it's constant example. air quotes. Yeah. And so what you're doing is you're getting a really intense uh, period of interval and then you're doing a recovery interval and you keep that going for, you know, your whole entire workout. And that's that's a, an efficient way to burn a huge chunk of calories. Mm -hmm. That's what I'd say. I would think that hit hit type cardio is what most people are looking for when they think when they're describing this weird non-descriptive what do i actually want right. like well i just i want to be able to eat the food that i want 
and still lose weight and work out, not necessarily lose muscle, but I'm trying to be toned, not right. big. Like hit is really what you're looking for. Cause what it's going to do is it's like, yeah, did you have brunch this morning? And it was maybe a little higher calorie than you wanted to, but you're still going to go to the gym and you're going to do 30 minutes of cardio. Yeah. Well, if you're doing hit stuff, that is going to probably be hitting the goals you want. Yeah. Hitting a few hits workouts a week. Hitting a few for, hits. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hit, hit, hit. Um, <laughs> is an excellent like lifestyle approach. I'd yeah. Say. Yeah. You know, it's, it's great. You don't want to just do, you know, steady state if you're just trying to be healthy and, you know, not gain fat from the food that you're eating. You want to do a mix of both, I would say. And for the performance people, you want to do both of those because if you are a runner, say we're working on a two mile. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you keep running two mile, two mile, two mile, your brain is going to be saying like, okay, I found a pace I like, and it's just going to get more and more comfortable in that pace. It's going to hurt less. So say your brain just falls you into like an eight minute mile. Right. Because you're somewhat faster than a normal person. So it's like, man, I can only run a two mile in 16 minutes. I can't get better. The best way to get faster is sprints. Yeah. Increase that explosive, like that explosiveness, build those leg muscles, and then suddenly your brain is going to naturally start finding that speed, mm -hmm. and it's going to build up for you. Same thing with like doing squats. It's surprisingly a lot of people don't think about that. If you people who have high squats and do running, just because you squat doesn't mean you can run. I'm going to go yeah. and point it out right now. Yeah, <laughs> if you are, if you take two runners and one who can squat, the one who can squat is faster. Yes, without a doubt. Oh, I yeah. bet. I bet my entire savings on it. Unless they're like three hundred pounds or something like that. No, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're we're yeah. talking two people who run the exact same amount. Like they yeah. are. So we'll say they're they're committed running buddies. They're always together, and one can freaking squat three plates for ten. Yeah. he's faster. Well, you're completely right because I have a client that he's an endurance athlete, and he does like these ultra bike races like yeah. 100 mile bike races and stuff like that which is you know i would never insane that, but yeah <laughs> shout out to him mad respect um but yeah so he like was not doing any resistance training before he met me and started working with me mm -hmm. and then i started having him do legs and upper body like three times a week yeah you know not at the same time but you know spread out mm -hmm. and he like increased his uh interval speed on his like you know they have where they have to go, you know, a certain amount of miles in, you know, a period of time. He increased that speed by 25% just yeah. from adding the lifting in. It's it's crazy. It's yeah. it's it's counterintuitive because we all think like, oh, mass equals bad. It's like, no, your body will compensate and then those fibers are just going to become steel. They're not just going to expand, expand, expand. It's the yeah. it's the joke of like, oh, well, I don't want to bulk up. It's like, trust me, if you're not trying to bulk up, you will not bulk up. Right. It's not that easy. Everyone would look like Arnold no one has ever accidentally become Arnold. Right. I'm going to go ahead and just tell you right now. I'm sorry. If you did, let me know. How did you yeah, do please, it? Please, <laughs> please. Yeah, please. Please. Yeah. So I tripped and fell into this, this pile of needles and those apparently it was from this uh, steroids factory. Yeah, it was a totally weird day. Woke up looking like Arnold. <laughs> exactly, it was a great day. Um, so, if we're trying to build, we're trying to build cardiovascular health. We're trying to lose fat. Yeah. If you were to say, and I know this is not the right way to look at it, but if you were to say, I'm someone who wants to build cardiovascular health. What is the the thing you'd say if you could do nothing else? You do this. If I was trying to lose fat, this is the one thing I'd say to do. If I could do nothing else. Uh, so like only one piece yes, of cardio. Yes, let, let's just say like this is the this is my A team for cardiovascular health. This is my A team oh. for uh, fat loss. Okay, I get I get what you're saying. Um, so basically, if you're ideally for fat loss, you would want a mix of steady state and hit. Mm -hmm. If you're not doing a ton of lifting, because what that is going to do is just like you said, you're going to you know get the slow deficit and burn from that you know heart health covering that, but then the hit is going to increase your performance over time because you're pushing that threshold yeah. of intensity. You're actually making like a, a bigger impact on that individual session, which will then make you better at the steady state. So I would say that's really good for uh, fat loss. Now, the other one was performance, right? Is that no, the other one was cardiovascular health. Like, I'm just trying to, yeah. my my mom actually has, my mom has a bum heart. I would like to not have a bum heart when I okay. grow up. What do I, I would say, do? what you want to do is, you know, stay, focus just on steady state. Mm -hmm. I would do like 20 to 35 minutes of something that's going to get your heart rate over 125. You don't have to get it up to like 180, like, in, you know, yeah. get close to your max death heart rate, but something that's going to basically cause your body to start using fat for fuel which helps improve cholesterol, keeps your heart active, and it also makes it so like you're metabolically flexible. Okay, and then finally, as we all know, in elementary school and middle school, social cloud was all about how fast you could run. <laughs> right. The the coolest kid in school could run fast as hell, and yeah. I want to be that kid right now. I'm going to go to work and I'm going to tell everyone like I'm going to challenge my boss to a foot race, and I'm going <laughs> to say like I am challenging you to a foot race for the ownership of this company. Yeah. How do I win that race? Well, I think. 
just like you said, squats definitely help with that. Mm -hmm. You're going to be way more explosive. You're training the same energy system on a squat that you are in a sprint because it's like, you know, a sprint is ideally less than a minute. You know, you ideally, know, <laughs> most people aren't sprinting, you know, at that full intensity for a minute more. Like, those those quarter, quarter mile sprints were a little rough. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like that's why the quarter mile is so tough is because it's right at that minute mark where you're burning yep. out. Um, and then outside of that, you want to do those intervals that we're talking about where your heart rate comes up for a period and then comes down and then up and then down. And that raises not only your pain threshold, but also your heart's ability to recover and recuperate so that you can have that speed. Okay. And then finally, the, the big questions, we'll break this into a couple parts. Mm -hmm. If I am a beginner, I do not run, I have never run, but I'd really like to get into it. What should I be doing tomorrow? Mm -hmm. And what should I be doing for the next couple of weeks as I get so into like it? So like a couch to 5K is that what we're kind of talking about? You can Google that right now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can't Google it and they'll probably give you a better answer than this, but I would say start with like, you know, something, you know, that walk, start walking, mm -hmm. get, get some steps in. And then from there, what I would do is like, start running at a slower pace than you think that you need to start at. Because everyone like, <laughs> they see what like runners look like on TV. Yep. And they're like, I'm going to do that. And they go and they last like 45 seconds. And they're like, man, I got to take a breather already. Perfect example. <laughs> like on one of our first friends, Celeste was finally feeling good about himself. And he's like, I'm going fast. And I was just like, I'm not. <laughs> and uh, and he bolts right at the beginning. And I yell out to him. I was like, you're going to burn out. He doesn't even look back. He's just cruising. Yeah. He's like a quarter mile ahead of me for like the first half of the run. Yeah. And at about like the turnaround, I think it was about half a mile or something. He, he just like burns out. He doesn't stop running. But then I just slowly pass him. It's like, okay, there we are. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just, it's funny because people think they're like, speed out of the gate let's get it and yeah. go after it it's just like no like consistency it's yeah. better to stick with one solid pace mm -hmm. than to explode at the beginning and die at the end yeah and another thing i learned about that that even helps is when you it feels uh that terrible feeling you get when you first start cardio you know it's like mm -hmm. my legs are burning my lungs are burning this is horrible and then like 10 12 minutes in that kind of goes away yeah and you start to feel better more comfortable at it it's because your body's shifting from burning carbs to burning fat and it's Actually, like an uncomfortable feeling because your body doesn't want to do that yeah it's going into like the easy jet fuel that <laughs> we prefer as energy to be a performance you know athlete to dipping into your you know emergency fat reserves that you need to survive the winter and your body doesn't want to do it it's yeah. telling you not to and it's like you know holding you back slightly until you hit that point but once you hit that point and you're like you go into what people say cruise control yeah that's when you're like actually in that cardio zone that we're looking for yeah the uh the funny thing about running for me is i have my body every single time i get to run i have to take a shit mm -hmm. i have to go pee i suddenly get super thirsty yeah it's just like it's like my brain is always funny. like creating <laughs> issues that don't exist because that's why every time before i walk out i try to go to the bathroom yeah i drink a little bit of water because when i go out there's like my body is still going to tell me all these things need to happen yeah because it knows it's coming <laughs> you're like hey it's okay brain we got it's, all that like, it's like it's like a child it's just like oh well you know i'm hungry you just ate it's like oh well i have homework no we checked you already did it it's like okay we're going to the we're going yeah <laughs> yeah dude, you're i didn't know that i didn't know about that transition during the run because it's it is a really miserable feeling and you get used to it as yeah. you go along but it is such it easier it's oh. so shitty and then by the time you're at the i would say the three-fourths mark of your run you're feeling pretty good yeah. and then once you can see the ending you're like then it starts hurting again yeah but the uh, you get reminded that yeah you're, like, you're reminded this. like oh wait i'm doing this so this sucks <laughs> but yeah like right around from the half to the three-fourths mark of your run it's just like this isn't that bad yeah especially if you're like with somebody or you have something to listen to or you're like see something interesting mm -hmm. that's uh it's a big mental game where you're trying to find that zone that's kind of like what i think the runner's high is is that you know you know release of intention that you're no longer like fighting yourself for fuel the runner's yeah. high is fake it's like it's fake news. <laughs> <laughs> it is not real he can say whatever he wants this is welcome to the dimension this is the cool side of the room uh, the runner's high does not exist it's by big runner they're trying to sell you more sacconis fake news <laughs> <laughs> they want you to eat more goo there is no high Get your whoop strap <laughs> yeah the whoop strap doesn't even tell you time it's just a strap <laughs> yeah. Yeah. no I, it, I have you had a runner's high i never have yeah i think it's kind of like this um i compare it well not only to you switching to a more uh usable fuel source mm -hmm. but it's kind of like when you eat something spicy 
And like after the pain goes away a little bit, you're like, okay. I'm oh, alive. the dopamine, what you yeah, eat, something yeah. spice. <laughs> that's what it's kind of like, I think, too. Yeah. No, that's, that is a really good point where the, uh, once you overcome the pain threshold. Yeah. No matter if you're used to the pain or not, you still get dopamine. Yeah, you're like, okay, I'm it's alive. the same reason. Like, okay. people get tattoos and they like want another one because it feels good. Like, yeah, yeah like this feels awesome. Yeah, or uh, working out even, or yeah. uh, running still doesn't count. Runners high doesn't exist. <laughs> um, but but with that said, yeah, that's yeah. a it is a weird thing. But so okay, we're we've gotten past beginners. Now this is a I think a very ignored zone of people. Mm -hmm. The I go running a couple times a week. I've never really lost weight from it, but I do have cardio vascular health mm -hmm. but i really want to like step it up or maybe actually even better yet the people who i go to the gym and i do 15 30 minutes cardio at the beginning or end every single time right what do i need to do to actually be good at this or like become we'll say performance side more than anything yeah. okay but like i want to i want to go from i do this to burn a couple extra calories to like i want to actually be pretty explosive yeah so you're trying to like actually level up your cardio yeah i'm showing up for like my that. mud run in uh, a yeah. couple months and i gotta show off for all the people there with their toe shoes so this is like <laughs> i love the toe shoes just kidding i don't they're <laughs> terrible <laughs> runner eyes are fake toe shoes are bad <laughs> yeah trust me every girl is like why are you wearing those <laughs> Hey, unless they sponsor us, I'm never wearing toe shoes. Yep. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Basically, I would say, yeah, it's just like, you know, are you when you go in the gym to work out, are you working out? Are you training? You have to actually like do the stuff that's going to make you better at it. Um, I would say, like, if your goal is to be a more endurance runner and, like, get farther in your runs, you have to, like, schedule out distances. You know, it's like a marathon runner doesn't go out and run a marathon every day, right? Mm -hmm. They're like, I'm going to run 10 miles at like a faster pace than what I would do my marathon at. Yeah. You know, so they'll do like a, like a fast interval or, you know, a marathon runner will also say like, I need to get, you know, my mile time down. So I'm going to hit the bike really hard for like two minutes, all intensity, and then two minutes slow. Yeah. You know, something like that where you're, you're training your heart rate to be able to like handle that higher intensity. And that doesn't come like overnight. It takes a long time to build up that speed and your ability to get better at it over time. Yeah. Uh, it just reminded me, it reminded me there was a, I think they're called 60 20s. Yes. Where you like sprint 60, walk 20. Yep. Sprint 60, walk 20, which we're doing on Tuesday. Good luck. Because um, I just thought <laughs> oh, of it. Now. Great. They, <laughs> yeah. It's just, yeah, way. those are, those are one of my favorite things. It's stuff like that. It's just like, yeah, you. It's almost like uh, going to your car and hitting the gas as hard as you can, getting the, whoa, 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 and like you can't go any higher than that. Yeah. But your body is a cool machine, and it's super interesting. And it do, when it peaks out there, every time you touch that, it can go further, and the red zone moves further away. Yeah. And then it's just like, and then like suddenly next, next workout, yeah. your red zone's even farther. Exactly. Down. Every yeah. single time, you're slowly growing your ability. You can turn from like a Fiat to a muscle car. As yeah. long as you just keep hitting the engine hard. Don't do that to your actual car. That will not happen. Yeah, you'll, you'll um, your car. <laughs> but with that said, you're a very special snowflake car, and yeah. we love you, and you're going to do great. Well, let's take the two mile, for example, right? Yeah. You know, because the, all, all you military guys getting ready for, you know, the pit, fitness test that we're going to have to do next year. I'm not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> like, I refuse. <laughs> like, I, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> well, basically, it's like everyone's trying to get their two mile faster. And what they need to do is just like you said, like you go in there, you go redline it for a little bit, then you recover and redline it and recover. And eventually, the next workout or the next, you know, a week later or so, that redline is even farther down you, your threshold for you know hitting that max is now higher so then when you actually perform your race like you know race time mm -hmm. your ability to maintain that faster pace that yeah. higher heart rate is is elevated this is a good time to tell you too that redlining hurts it's uncomfortable you might throw up yes uh you're gonna feel nauseous things are terrible the red the, the red zone is a bad zone we don't like it there it's a good it zone to feel, feel better but let me tell you what it's not a fun place to live. It's called lactic threshold. You know, when you get that feeling like you're getting lightheaded, you have to mm -hmm. either go to the bathroom, throw up, or, you know, yeah. pass out. It's like your ability, you're building up so much lactic acid in your body at that point that you don't know what to do with it or handle it. And, you know, you eventually go into shock. Not like <laughs> shock. Death shock, but, you know. Ooh, I'm dying. <laughs> yeah, but it's like that's when you throw up or you're going to, like, get lightheaded or something like that. But every time you get to that point, 
your lactic threshold gets raised higher. You are literally getting better at poisoning yourself. <laughs> it's like when you and the boys were crushing booskies, booskies, brewskies in college. Now you're able to survive your more of them. Your tolerance is higher. Your tolerance yeah. is higher. If someone tries to poison you, it's you're more likely to survive if you're lactic. That, that's a lie. Don't listen to me. I don't know if that's true. But well, uh, yeah, lactic acid. It's more of that acidic burn. Yeah, yeah. If you, we've all been if there. You you get, know? If you get hit with anthrax, you're gonna be like, you're gonna need a double dose. This <laughs> you're trying to kill me, son. I got right. a very high lactic threshold. Yeah. Thanks to the government, all those shots. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot die. I hit the red line. Yeah. Um, we'll go ahead and wrap up. Actually, okay. we're uh, getting close to time, but we did have some listener questions. Slice, you want to read those off for us? Uh, yes, I got you. Uh, the first one was actually very interesting to me, just the way you phrased it. <laughs> How to run away from your gains? Well, you, I don't think that was the question. Let's answer. Question? Let's see. You can run away from your gains by easily. Uh, not eating enough protein and overdoing cardio to the point where you're detracting from your ability to recover. So that's how you're going to. That wasn't the question, but it's a good answer. They're at the bottom. Oh, gotcha. I was going to say you guys covered most of this already. You're fired. Uh, does fiber count? Does fiber count as calories, basically? Yep. Um, yes, depending on where you get it from. So, like, the guy that was asking me this question, he said, you know, he was looking at, like, a protein bar. Yeah. You know, where it says net carbs. I hate the term net carbs. <laughs> yeah. He's like, does those carbs from the protein bar count, you know, towards his uh, calorie amount and or his carb amount for the day? And it does in that sense because it's a synthetic man-made fiber. You know, it's like your body mm -hmm. isn't going to process it the same as it does spinach. Well, and let me pause real quick on this because I had a big talk about this and my doctor told me I was stupid. Um, so there's Metamucil and yeah. there's fiber and power bars. Stuff. It's what their fiber is, is little like snow crystals. Uh -huh. Like it's just these like, little branched out crystals, like crystalline structures that are creating fiber. Right. Um, spinach is long ropes. Okay. That is why organic non-man-made fiber is about a hundred times better mm -hmm. because if you're getting like these little fibers they kind of like catch on to what they do but if you've got like these big spinach ropes in there lassoing the carbs in your body um the the it, it that's why you're getting better poopies that's why you're feeling better that's why you're holding on to more water mm -hmm. because you have big ropes instead of like these weird little chunks of crystal yeah so when a power bar says, oh, net carbs. They're doing that because the FDA says they're allowed to. Right. It's the same Loophole. reason that if something is less than five grams of sugar, they yeah. don't have to include it on the label. Mm -hmm. It's bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it just, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, it's like it's a loophole so they can make it sound better than it really is. Mm -hmm. I would say like fiber that is coming from like a synthetic source uh, is like you should count it, you know, like fiber in, you know, yeah. uh, carrots yeah. or that's not a synthetic source, but that's like there's not enough. Carrots are fake. <laughs> I guess what I'm getting at with this is like uh, the types of fiber that you don't count. Let's focus on that. Okay. It's going to be like green veggies like spinach, yep. broccoli, asparagus, uh, cauliflower, um, cabbage. Things yep. like that that are like the fiber is so long of those ropes like yep. you're talking about that your body can't really process it. But when it's chopped up and broken up into smaller pieces, yep. like uh, those crystals that are just little chunks of yep. it, your body will process that and it will use Like it. bran isn't even a good type of fiber. Right. Like there was a long time where like, everyone was like, bran muffins are healthy. No, they're not. Yeah, because those are it's like they're fiber, yeah, in like circles. Yeah, it, it doesn't make the same thing. It's uh, but look, like, I'm gonna meet you in the middle here because I I do think that we should encourage fiber mm -hmm. in any level. Fiber doesn't cancel out carbs, right? But with that said, if you're getting fiber, you don't have to count your sauces. I think that's a good middle ground. If you unless you're like drenched in ketchup. What? <laughs> I feel like if you meet in the middle and you're eating a ton of, and this is not, this is not, this is not, Wes is not co not the five-star diet. We're not talking about the five-star diet. <laughs> that is, the five-star diet and Dimitri are very much <laughs> at, at, at odds. But if you're going to be the person who wants to meet in the middle and say like, yeah. look, I'm eating all my vegetables, Dimitri, they should be yeah. counting out my carbs. First of all, broccoli is pretty high in carbs. Let's just deal with that. Second of all, that you cannot cancel out a the, just because you put a lot of spinach on your sandwich doesn't can, cancel out those two right. slices of bread. You're right. It doesn't. But I will it. say that if you like spread a little bit of mayo on it, not a lot. Be careful, and uh, you put a little like whatever sauce you put on there. We'll go ahead and say that you don't have to count that teaspoon or tablespoon of that in your thing. 
I would say like if you're tracking your carbs and you're tracking your broccoli carbs, you're you're missing the point. It's yeah. like you should be tracking the starchy carbs, like the ones from, you know, <laughs> the bread or from exactly. like, you know, your pasta. That's the carbs you should be tracking. Yeah. Yeah. If you unless you're like showing up for competition, mm-hmm. It's just it's it, you're you're starting to get caught in the weeds. It's uh it's the same kind of person that says, uh, I'm calling out Slice because it's just what I do every Sunday. <laughs> is a Slice like I'd really like to get into drawing again, and I was like, cool, you should go grab a piece of paper and a pencil, yeah. and draw. Mm-hmm. And he's just like, well, no, it's not that simple. And I'm like, elaborate. And he's like, well, I mean, like I gotta go like watch some videos on how to like draw this better, draw this better. I was like, how about you just go draw something? That is the same type of person. It's just like, well, you see. I got to like balance my net carbs, my carbs and this, that, and the other. It's like, how about you just eat green stuff and go on walks and don't drink soda. And yeah. then if you want to start worrying, if you want to have the conversation mm-hmm. about like the, the, the nitty gritty of like how to make sure every single ab has the, the side striation that you need, we can have that discussion that, that exists for you. That comes later, but we'll get there. Yeah. Would you like to defend yourself on your drawing statement? How many things have you drawn since that conversation? Uh, no, I was just going to say that <laughs> you cook broccoli and cheese. It's not broccoli. It's just cheese. Ah, that's true. That's, that's good. I, that's a really like good that. point. That was actually good very point. important. <laughs> butter and garlic. I know I said that I'm going to defend sauces. Butter is not sauce. <laughs> <laughs> like there was like I, butter. I gave <laughs> you, I gave you a tablespoon of mayo. I really feel like I was being overly flexible in He's that statement. Very nice the first one. when he said that. But very nice I'm going to meet you right now and say butter is not sauce. And I know some of you people for some reason think that butter on a sandwich counts as a part of the sauce. It doesn't mm. track it. <laughs> yeah. What was our second question? Uh, Oh, would you have some? You basically uh, covered it already. It was. I don't think we did. Getting fiber uh, in keto. Oh yeah. Oh, the keto. No, yeah, we didn't cover that yet. Uh, well, I looked this up because I had to look it up specifically. Wait, wait, wait. Let me say something. So first off, the recommended uh, by the FDA on how much fiber you should have a day for a male is twenty-five to fifty grams a day. I think for women it's like a little bit less. It's like. 20 to 35 or something like yeah. that. Yeah. So it's like, despite being on keto, you should probably have some fiber in your diet, right? Well, okay. So this is great because yeah. you, you would ask me about this because I've had very dumb diets over the last couple months. Um, and the big criticisms for carnivore, mm-hmm. keto, paleo, surprisingly not, uh, because it's all sweet potatoes, basically. Uh, <laughs> so keto and, uh, and uh, carnivore is there's a noted absence of fiber for a lot of people right and that being said it really doesn't make sense because you can have leafy vegetables and stuff when you're on keto yeah there's there's no reason you shouldn't but everyone's just like cool so i got this piece of bacon i'm gonna cover it in cream cheese and then i'm gonna sprinkle more cheese on top and this is what we call health (laughs) and uh keto keto keto. um (laughs) you're still looking a little fat no i'm great um the uh the problem is, is if you don't have those carbs that are like bulking out your body and having all these things, you're basically just going to be, um, just, it's just fat going yeah. through your body. It's, it, you need it to help clear your intestines. Do you remember that diet, so, uh, diet pill? Like it was like ally or alley or something like that. It was like something like that. The leaky gut one. Is leaky that, gut one oh, is yeah. the one that basically made it so your body didn't digest fat. So you were just like squeaking stuff out at all times. It was like literal fat leaking out your butt. It was <laughs> you throw, throw on your depends, but you will lose weight. Yeah. The, yes. uh, the point is, is if you want to get the best nutritional value out of your food, the best way to do that is with fiber. It's the, if you want to be colon health, you exactly. Know, health, if you want to be like hydrated, fiber if you want to be getting nutrition fiber it's like fiber is very important and a lot of the times when people who are eating fast food all the time Mm -hmm. it's not even so much the calories and the salts and stuff it's like there's like not a lot of fiber in fast food so it's you're not only just feeling like crap and all this stuff it's because you're not getting the whole foods and everything yeah your digestion is screwed it's just it's jacked up yeah so if you're on keto and stuff you should be you know if you know avocados there's fiber and fat in there uh Chia seeds, chai, chai, cheats. I don't know, it's chia, chia? Yeah, I think it's chia seeds. What's chai. The, what's the other ones that, like, is chia seeds the one that get all, like, goopy? The, dude, have you ever drank that? So there's chia seeds. I'm going to say chia. I don't know. I, I think it's chia. I think, I think of chai tea. I think they're different things. <laughs> um, there's chia seeds, and you put them on your pet, and they grow. But the uh, <laughs> if you put them in a bottle and you fill them with water, apparently they just, like, turn, like, these orbs yeah, like, like little gel orbs. weird gel tadpole things, yeah. and then people drink them, and it's like boba, but like five times more assaulting. <laughs> and <laughs> <That is> uh, <laughs> the uh, 
it, it, what's great about those is they have like a high level of fiber and it keeps you hydrated because they sit in your stomach because water is just constantly moving through your membranes and stuff inside you whereas like fiber sits in your stomach and has to like wait for itself to move through yeah, it like pushes stuff through your intestines basically. exactly it's like i think of a pipe cleaner that's kind of what it does yeah you just got you eat, you eat chia and so you like, got a pipe cleaner. Yeah, you got chia, you got avocados, uh, like what they say, like nuts, like cashews. Flax seeds, cashews, pecans. Yeah, things like you that. You say pecan or pecan? Pecans, I think. You're like, you, you're like, I think. <laughs> I he's like, what is the right answer? Yes. Pecan <laughs> is apparently wrong. Pecan is correct. Okay. Um, you, and then at the end of the day, you're doing, you're doing keto. I get it. Eat spinach. Let's tie it all into both questions together real quick. So basically, they are somewhat related. I think the reason why people are concerned with net carbs in the first place is, one, they don't want to raise their insulin levels, you know, because they hear that insulin is bad in mm -hmm. all circumstances, which is not true. But I love insulin. It's awesome. Yeah, it, it's useful, <laughs> and it's also dangerous, depending on what you do with it. But uh, people who – it came from the diabetic community. Yeah. And keto kind of took it over because they're like, ooh – glycemic index you know carbs are bad because of insulin and blah 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 and yeah. keto, uh, you can't have carbs and still be in ketosis well it's like those fibers that are from a simplified source you'll still raise your insulin but if you're eating uh like spinach leafy things broccoli like that the amount of carbs that get released and the rate at which they get digested is so low that it doesn't really affect your insulin yeah so if you're diabetic, if you're keto, you can still get useful and beneficial fiber from those sources that you probably even need without throwing your insulin or keto out of whack. Exactly. And it's uh, it's funny because you said that if you put cheese on your broccoli, it's now cheese. So <laughs> technically it could be keto. Yeah. <laughs> keto broccoli. <laughs> exactly. Um, do we have anything else we want to cover? I feel it's good. I think it's good that cardio is coming back. It only comes back in the summer. And then as soon as summer's over, everyone's just like, cool, it's time to be fat again. Mm -hmm. um, bulking season is a uh, all, year, all year theme. Because we're taking back crop tops, remember? So. Oh, yes. right. so did we tell you that we're taking back crop tops? Guys? Yeah. No. So in the 80s, guys wore crop tops. Yeah. We're taking back crop tops. Well, one of my clients told me that it instead of white boy summer, it's hot boy summer. So maybe that I like hot boys. With... Why did he say white boy summer? Why can't it be hot or hot because boy summer? Because that's very exclusive. You know? <laughs> hot boy summer feels far more. <laughs> I don't more know. Inclusive. I don't know why my brain didn't go to that immediately. Because I was yeah. like, I was like, hot girl summer, white boy summer. I was like, I guess that's the opposite. It's like, yeah. no, the opposite is hot boy summer. <laughs> yes, we're. We are now co-signing Hot Boy Summer. Yes. This is what we're here for. We're all going to be hot boys. Your body's perfect the way it is, unless it yeah. isn't. Rock then that crop top. <laughs> we're, we're taking back crop tops. We will come back full circle to this. That's going to be like the, the first merch drop is going to be like a freaking... Yeah. Crop top. BNS crop BNS top. crop tops for boys. No yes. girls allowed. Hot and hashtag hot boy summer. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, guys. Well, as always, thank you for joining. You can find us on YouTube, uh, BNS underscore radio, Instagram, everywhere. Find us there. Follow, like, subscribe, hit the ding, ding bell. Ding. It helps us out. Listener questions, please. Please. We love those. And we love you. We'll argue with each other for your listener question enjoyment. Butter is not a sauce. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> What the hell was that beeping? I don't know. Was the camera good? Uh, oh, no, it was the camera. I think you're... Shit. <laughs>